Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I'm going to burst your bubble just because I can, so I'm going to piss off a lot of people in this video. Because I'm actually going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to tell you things that you are not being told by, well, every channel out there on YouTube about this sort of thing where you want to try and use an iPad to actually replace a desktop computer. No. Realistically, it's got way too many negative sides to it. Um, especially when it comes to photo and video editing. Even on the amateur level, you're not going to be very happy. See, here's the thing. A lot of our devices now from Apple are more than capable of 4K recording, right? Front and back cameras, for example, on the iPhone 12 mini, which I happen to actually own one, so I, I can record video in 4K on this, front camera or back camera. I can do rear 4K on my uh, iPad Air 4 and I can do 1080p on the front which is fantastic huge upgrading cameras from my 7th gen but what you're not being told is this number one you got a lot more steps to take just to get a video into even iMovie for example and you shot it in 4k but you can't view it in 4k not on your tablet and not even on a 4K display will you get 4K resolution because the output bus of the tablets from Apple as well as their iPhones unless there is an actual iPhone or tablet with a 4K video output feed you're not going to get 4K you're not even going to get 2K you're going to get 1080p and that's about as best as you're going to be able to expect which means what? It means that it sucks because you can't even do a proper high resolution photograph that is above what your screen is for quality, okay, for manipulating the photo. So let, let's take a look at a file here. This is recorded in 4K. And we're going to play it back on our screen over here. Um, but uh, anyways, and I, and I love that. Let's start at the beginning. We're just going to do a scan around the room kind of deal. Okay, there's the camera. This was recorded on my video. iPhone 12 mini. There you go. Um, but uh, anyways, and I, and I love that camera. It, it works really well for a lot of things. But, uh, you know, we're going to scan around and scan around. And Okay, so we, we've got a good picture of things happening, right? But, okay, so it, it looks half decent on a 1080p screen, even though we're not getting full out screen, which we're not going to get anyways, not for this player. But, either way, we do have a file that was recorded in 4K. And when I look on it here on screen, and I look on it on there, I'm like, wow, it is like 10 times better over here, right? But people want to be able to go to an external display to get more real estate so they can see more, do more, especially with their their uh, movie file tools, okay? So let's go to iMovie here. Let's fire up iMovie. Let's click the project. Click movie. Click on this. Create movie. That's a lot of steps. Okay, now we want to play it back here. We're just going to do so a scan around the room. We're going to get a small frame initially, okay? Which is fine. We still got basically twice the size of picture almost kind of deal okay there's the camera and looking at the two of them back video. and forth that there one does go. look more washed out um, but we can expect that it's a matte uh, screen anyways, too. And, I, and I love that camera it works really well for a and a matte screen is definitely going to give you a more washed out picture for viewing even on a 1080p monitor but we can blow this up to full screen a lot of things so let's uh, bring this back to the beginning we're just going to do a scan around the room kind of deal. Okay, now, it looks pretty decent. This video. There you go. But if we had to do um, any kind of color right. correction to it, even properly, this is going to be a real chore if we're going to try and rely on an external screen because it's not going to work well for us. It really honestly isn't. Okay? So, we have to rely on this internal screen. Uh, anyways, and I, and I love that camera. It, it works really well for a lot of things. And even the internal screen is not giving us 4K reproduction at any scaling of a level. It's, it's whatever the native resolution of the screen is on your tablet, that's what you're going to get for viewing. So you can't actually even view a 4K file unless you have a 4K screen on your tablet 
or you have a 4K output, which you're not going to have on the tablets. It just doesn't happen. Even Apple's laptops, I don't know of any laptop that they have that actually has a 4K screen or a 5K screen on a laptop. You know, even their most expensive laptop, I don't even think has that. But their iMac, certainly even the lower tier, like my late 2015 iMac, um, it's a 5K Retina display. So, let's go to the iMac. Now, I have it in a raw file on the iMac, exact same file. Let me just uh, close this out here. So I'm going to say done. Uh, on a, actually, ah, get back here. I want to delete this out because I don't need it. Delete project, gone. And gone. And we got to make sure we shut down our background apps because we got a bunch of them on the go. Okay, so now viewing this on the iMac, of course, we now see what 4K actually looks like on a big screen. And we can manipulate 4K. Right? We're just going to do a scan around the room kind of deal. Okay, there's the camera we're using to record this video. There you go. Um, so if I stop somewhere, now it stays clean. That's great, because it wasn't entirely clean on the, on the tablet or on the external screen, but there it's clean. It's up. There it blurs. Anyway. Depends on where, where you stop on the frame, right? I look. You might get lucky. There's another one. We got a clear frame. Boom. Right? So, you know, when you're scanning back and forth, you got to look at that. Okay, so we know QuickTime. We can play it back through there. That's great. Okay, let's go to iMovie now. How easy is this to get into iMovie? Drop and drop. And now we can just go through this. And I want to end the video right on this spot. No, I want to go a little bit more in. Right there. Double click, set my mark. Split and delete the end. Let's go back. We're just going to do a scan around the room kind of deal. Okay, there's the camera we're using to record this video. There you go. Now, if there's other things um, I want to change but, here. Uh, anyways, and I, and I love that camera. I, I can do that. It works really well for a lot of things. Right? So now I can mess around with colors. And I've got instant access to these tools real easy compared to the iPad. I can really make a disaster of this if I want to. <coughs> but either way, it's quick, simple, easy. Now, if I don't like what I've done, <laughs> because I really messed it up, I can just delete the whole works and go right back to the original file. because I haven't disturbed the original file yet, so everything is still intact, because I really screwed up that coloration bad. But it's that simple and easy on the Mac. And then of course I can have my intro, my outro, and then it's one click up on the top corner here to do, do the share. You want to share it as an export file, because you know you, wanna, you don't want to go direct to YouTube unless you want to, it's up to you, but you can. Um, but if I don't want to do anything, I can just delete this, get rid of this, Pretty simple, and I can quit from iMovie. Now, I've got the file. You've seen it in here. The file is right there. That is our file. We can click on this file. We grab the right mouse. It's there. Okay? No problem. Got that under control. Now, my iPhone 12, this is where the video was initially recorded. And there's the original file. But, I thought, ah, I'll just delete this. I don't want it on my camera anymore, it's already on the other ones. Yeah, we're all good. Okay, it's gone, right? Swipe, close out.
go back into the iPad. It's gone. I have a cloud version here. It downloaded from the cloud onto this one because I had to access it. It's gone. Oh man, seriously? It's gone forever. It's not even in cyberspace and there's no one doing this. However, I do have it on my Mac computer as a raw file. It's there. If I go into my Photos app, it's gone out of here because it was in here. Right? See, I, I, I've chosen to sync all my devices together. And when you do that, like most Apple fanatics, we do this. We share all of our stuff. Um, what we do on one happens to the other. If I'm surfing the Internet, because I use Google Chrome on, on my phone, I use it on my tablet, I use it on my computers, even my PC computer. Whatever I do on this on Chrome affects every computer, including my PC. So if I add a bookmark, remove a bookmark, it does it. And, and these can all be shut off, but as soon as I turn them on when I get home, all that is gone. Because everything is all synced. Okay, so that you got to be very careful of that. Before you even make more space on here, make sure you back up on a separate drive what you don't want to keep on the phone, but you still want to keep it. You better back it up because as soon as you hit delete on one of your devices, it's gone off everything. All right, so the only safety net you have between even a Mac and a PC is to have a raw file away from your photos program that's not part of the sync system. Have that raw file backed up that way. Then this way, we still have the file on our Mac. We just don't have it in pictures, but we do have the raw format here. And that, I did that through AirDrop. I AirDropped from here to the iPad and to there, but I also made sure that I when I airpad airdropped to the Mac, it didn't go to the photos area because it was already there anyways as soon as I put it to the iPad. I wanted a raw copy on my desktop that was secured, so I just did a straight out airdrop, even though I didn't have to. I could have taken it out of photos first, but I wanted to have a secure copy no matter what, which is good. Saved my neck, and it's allowed me to try 15 times to do this video today. Actually, more than that because I'm on my fifth battery trying to do this video. So what you have not been told are all the extra steps. What you have not been told is that any 4K footage that you view that you've taken is not going to be viewable even on a 4K display. You can plug your tablet into a, a 8 and 10K TV. I could care less. You're going to get a nice picture still at 1080. It's going to just be looking nicer, but it's not going to be 4K. It's not going to be 6. It's not going to be 8. Not going to be 10. So whatever you do you're going to be editing right on your iPad, which really sucks. Okay, To even put that same video out onto a 2K display, it'll look prettier in 1080p, but it's still not going to have the color palette correct with the correct colorization in front of your face because the screen on here is far superior in quality and reproduction than what you're going to get out the bus because the bus, all it's going to do is this going to output? Like you guys have seen my LG display. Okay. That's my LG Quad HD display. Now that's a 2K 1440 display basically. It's basically 2K. Actually a little higher. But my Mac is able to push it to 4K. I have videos proving this that we actually pushed that to a 4K resolution off my Mac. My PC can just do it at 1440. Yet my Mac has a lot less video power in it. And it can push it push that to 4K without any issues whatsoever. So, even on pushing this out to that, okay, you've already seen what it's like on the 27, so let's push this same, this same thing out. Let's go to this screen. I love technology. Okay, so now we have it on here. Now that looks actually pretty snappy cool, right? So, but we have a problem. We don't have our video anymore. Our video is only sitting on our Mac at this point. But can we get it back? Why? I'm glad you asked that because I'm pretty sure we definitely can. So let me do that for you and we'll, we'll get that back to you. Now I'm going to change the angle of my camera a bit. Um, like so because i got to get into an 
area where I don't want you seeing stuff on my computer for my sign-in stuff and whatnot. Okay. So, I want to take this and I want to put it to Kevy's iPad. And there we go. Now you can see my Mac a bit. Alright, it works really well. Alright. We're just so going to do back on there. the room kind of deal. Okay, there's the camera. Guess where, where else it is. this video. There you go. It's also um, back on the phone. But, uh, anyways, it's also back on my other tablet. Camera. It works really well for a lot of things. But, uh, you know, we're going to scan around and scan around. And, okay, so we've, we've got a good picture of things happening, right? What? All right, so let's go to iMovie. Now we're back in. That's a little bit better, bigger screen to work with. Now, even sitting dead on, this looks actually really good. Like, if I'm looking dead on the screen, that actually looks really good. But look over here, actually looks better. Why? Because this is 1080p. That's all it's giving us is just 1080p capability. Over here, we still got our higher resolution. So let's do the playback. We're just going to do a scan around the room kind of deal. That looks okay, really nice. Camera we're using to record this video. There you go. Um, Even though this is 1080p uh, anyways, and I, and I on a that camera, it works screen really that's well higher capability, things. but uh, you know we're going to scan it's around, closer scan around in capability actually okay, to so my we've iPad. We've got a good picture of things happening, right? What? So having a better screen definitely helps. However, we still have the same problem here, guys. The video was shot in 4K you're not going to be able to view that in 4K. Not unless you've got an iMac with a 5K retina display. Then okay, you can go 4K. Um, because you've got a 5K screen, it can definitely view the 5K footage properly. Same as when you take actual photos of stuff. It's going to show up better on the quality screen, even over top of your, your iPad screen. Because even your iPad screen cannot put a photo even on this screen, well enough to manipulate that photo for proper picture, you know, reproduction and coloration enhancements and stuff. You know, you're going to need a really super high-end display, and it still is not going to help you. It honestly is not going to help you. These are the things you are not being told by other channels, especially techie channels. I'm not a techie channel, you know, specifically. However, guys, I've been at this rat race a lot longer than most of them out there, especially the younger guys like millennials, they haven't got a clue yet of what technology is all about. <coughs> okay, I, I, I'm, I'm not ancient yet, but I'm no millennial. Okay, but I've been around Apple computers since 1981, and I've been a certified tech since 1990. Okay, I still don't know everything. I still get stumped the odd time. Okay, so. That's to be expected, and I'm trying to, to, to re-update myself because I've also been out of the loop for a while too. But even I know well enough to read specs, and when the specs even say that the output of the Lightning or the Type-C port is only this resolution, that's telling me right there that this is going to suck. You cannot properly video or picture edit on a tablet. you got to have a proper computer that is going to match the quality of the work that you are trying to fix up and make better, okay, or just even get it going better, right? So I kind of laugh at these channels that are showing, oh, look at this, I got this like 5 or 7K display or 8K display, whatever it is, and I'm doing this. You're not doing nothing. You're not doing a darn thing because that component is not capable of producing that quality grade of picture on the output bus. Okay? It doesn't have it internally. It certainly doesn't have it going to the external. Okay? Now, an iMac, on the other hand, for under $2,000, okay, and this is the late 2015, they do have a 5K Retina 2020 model, by the way, for about $23.99. Now, we, we are talking Canadian dollars on my channel, so keep that in mind. It's always Canadian dollars unless otherwise specified. But even the 27 inch, 
iMac 2020, which I was this close to buying. If I had the extra money, I would have. Um, but even that's a 5K Retina display, and when I go and I want to view something, boom, it's there. If I want to go into my picture area and I want to take a look at pictures, okay, even these cheesy pictures. You know what? Let me take a picture for you guys. I'm going to take a picture for you guys with my iPhone. And it's going to get zipped over to everything anyway. So, mm, camera app. Come on, camera. Not that. I don't want that. Give me my camera. Okay, so, photo mode. Highest resolution of the, of the camera. Let's do this. Okay, one little pretty picture. Now, let's put that pretty picture... stuff. Back into pictures. No, that's not the, that's not what we wanted there. Come on. I need pictures. Give me the just now. There we go. There's our picture. Now that's displayed over here. But we don't want it over there, we want it over here. I love being able to hot swap buses, it's so much fun. Okay, so there's the picture I just took from the back camera. It's just a photo. Okay? Um, now, that photo should also be in my photos area here. And lo and behold, voila! Okay. Look here, look here, and look over there. Nothing over there. So, this is like full overblown. Okay. Well, that's the normal size there. So, in looking at here and here, they're close. They're close. Not quite. That's a little more dusty, a little more flattish, a little more pastel -y, not so bright and vibrant. But the photo, at least, that's kind of a touch and go thing if we could really seriously want to think about editing this. Because when I look at them side by side real careful, I'm looking at glossy finishes, I'm looking at the mirror finish there. Oh, so much more beautiful on this side. Way better. A little more grainier in here. This is poof. You know? So, and we just did that live for you guys. You absolutely, if you are trying to even consider the idea of using any iPad, period. All right? The only way you are going to view 4K is you need a computer externally. There are no 4K output tablets on the market or iPads. None of them output through the bus at 4K, not even 5K. Okay, the best you can hope for is about 1080p. Maybe you might get 2K in the really super high-end ones from Apple. I don't know. I would actually have to check all the specs on the top-end ones to find out, which I've not done because I don't really care to do it. Only because I'm looking at the majority of stuff that normal people are buying. I'm not looking at stuff that professionals are buying. But even for the professional, you still should be having a real computer on your desk. Okay? And a professional would not even think twice. They would never consider the idea of trying to use an iPad as a daily driver every day for everything because they know darn well it ain't going to work. Graphic arts and design, movie making, I mean, we know that's what Apple computers and devices are for. Unfortunately, none of your phones and none of your iPads have a 4K output bus. So even if you have 4K quality video that you're shooting and you've got super high-end picture taking that you can do. The pictures are only going to output at the quality of which the bus can actually put it out onto an external screen. And even if you work with the internal screen, you're still not going to get the full viewing capability of what you should be getting considering you took that video in 4K. You can't edit in 4K. You can save it in 4K if you want. Sure, <laughs> I do it all the time. But you cannot expect quality work when you can't even see 
the 4K resolution for the color palette capabilities, the precision in the graphic, all that. You're not going to see it on a screen that doesn't even have 4K to begin with. Even though you shot it in 4K, you're not going to see it on a screen. On this, you're not going to see it on that. Okay? If you take the file off and you move it to a Mac with a 5K display or a 4K display external on a MacBook Pro, now you're talking, baby. Now you can actually do something real and practical. Same as your photos. Your photos are going to give you a pretty decent view. And if I look at my photos side by side up here, that is darn near identical. Okay? There is not much difference. So as far as photos go, we're okay from here to here, but as far as photos go from here to here, we can't do that. And that sucks. So, if we go to the other monitor, which is actually a monitor that is capable of up to 4K on a Mac, but we definitely got the 2K PC side, we're still going to get 1080. But, let's see what it looks like. So, um, let me change the camera around here. Oh. That's pretty close. To be honest, that is really close. So, this monitor might qualify as far as photos go. That's about the closest you're probably going to get without breaking the budget. And this is a $400 screen in Canada. And that's the LG 32-inch uh, Quad HD that I got at Walmart for $399.99 Canadian plus taxes. So, I know I bursted some bubbles, but you know what? <laughs> I've watched so many videos on this subject, nobody's telling you the truth. Okay? A lot of people will try to convince you that yes, you can use an iPad as a daily driver for everything. But honestly, you can't. You really can't. Even for doing amateur level stuff, I mean, hey, if you're happy with amateur level results or having results that suck even worse than what your actual thing was and you thought you needed to manipulate it, it it's going to go really bad for you. you. You have to have the right equipment in order to get the job done right. You know, and that's the, that's the thing. If you don't have the proper equipment, you look at even Android phones. There's Android phones out there that actually profess to have better cameras than Apple than Apple phones and Apple devices. But you know what? Even those things have output bus limitations. And they are. They are very limited on what they can do for an external display. You know? So you have everything in the whole world here as a problem when you're trying to use a tablet as a replacement daily driver. Now, if you are just doing typing, streaming some YouTube videos to watch, you know, using it as an information portable device kind of thing, and you're not going to even think about actual movie editing in the real world, doing actual anything really decent, okay, you could get away with the really subpar stuff for results, but not anybody that's above beginner grade. Anybody that's above beginner grade, you need gear. But even at that, you need gear that's going to show things. And guess what? This stuff ain't going to do it. This is why you need a real computer. Okay, even even a Mac laptop. Okay, with its highest end resolution screen, you know, it's still not going to be able to produce a proper, real, even 4K image on screen unless it happens to be at least a 4K quality resolution. Because you have to have the resolution within the computer and on the outside of the computer. Okay, it has to go in and out. If, it go, if, it's, if it's stuck in there, that it's 4K, well, okay, you can do it on the little screen. But if its output resolution is only 2K, well, now you've got another problem to deal with, don't you? Now you're getting half as much, right? So you've got to take these, into, these things into consideration. In my real experience and what I have shown and proven here today is that if you shoot a 4K video and you want to do anything practical with that 4K video even for coloration to make things a little different the way you might want to do it you are going to require at least an iMac at the minimal expense that has a 5K retina display in it otherwise forget it you're not going to pull it off same as your photos 
we have a photo up here that was taken, and it's like, what do you mean? No, I want to cancel that. I don't want to delete that yet. But we have a photo here that was taken, and it is really super nice, and I like that. But what's it like on the other display coming off the Mac in, in a 4K level? And then we're out of here. So let's do this, kids. See, this is the other reason why I love this screen. Okay. Let's go, puppies. All right. Exact same picture. Now, just to show you that that's actually the Mac, <laughs> we're going to unplug the iPad. Okay. So that's actually the Mac to there. Now, in me looking at this here, that actually looks pretty good. Now, let's change the resolution up. Let's see what an actual 4K picture of this really looks like. And we'll minimize that down. And we'll go here, go displays. LG. Scaled. 3840 by 2160 is what it's going to do to that screen. Boom. Now, it is going to bark because I am pushing it beyond. However, come on, disappear. It does show the current resolution being 3440 by 2160, or 3840 by 2160. So in looking at this one, without being exactly right side by side, and then going over to this one, now that's, that's on a 5K native, this is 4K. I think a little bit of extra brightness and maybe a touch less contrast in my settings on this screen and I would have a virtually identical picture minus the fact that this is a matte finish and that's a glass. But otherwise we're, we're really, really super duper. Okay? I rest my case kids. Take it for what it's worth. Do as you wish. If you're mad, you're going to be mad at me, but hey, you know what? I'm a straight shooter. I tell it how it is, and if you don't like it, too bad. That's my way. So, at least i am actually got the courage to tell you guys and show you and prove to you the truth on these subjects. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. We are going to be talking about mm, 4K and 8K TVs and PlayStations and all that other fun stuff in the next video. So, stay tuned, because it's going to be real interesting. I'm going to get a lot of other people mad too, but hey, whatever. Can't make everybody happy, can I? Nope. See ya.